What's going on guys and welcome to a quick video where I'm going to show you exactly how I make my time lapses. I've got quite a few comments and a couple of PM messages asking me how I do it. So I thought it'd be easy if I just made a quick video so you could see it and do it yourself at the same time. So first off, we're going to actually have to download a couple of things. I'll put all the links in the description, but I've just got them bookmarked just so it's easier for me. Uh, let's go to the multi one first. Okay, so this is the main mod that actually captures a Skype pops up. This is the main mod that actually captures the images for the time lapse. It was originally being developed by this person, however, they've suddenly gone inactive. So somebody else has picked it up, which is great. Okay, so currently it's for the most recent version, 1.5, 1 1.2. 1 so if you scroll down to the bottom, we've got the downloads and They've actually updated it since I last saw it, but we're going to download this one here. Well then, now this isn't, you don't need this, but I'd recommend getting Optifine. Optifine is a FPS aid, but it also gives you loads of other features to control render distance. So when you're doing time lapses and you're a long way away, it's a lot easier to see longer distance shots because you can edit it much easier. So we'll just download this as well. Now there is lots of different versions for Optifine, but I think... If you don't know what any of these do and you don't know if it'll help you, just stick with the standard version, it's a lot simpler. So we'll just download that. Right, that is actually all we need to download, it's only these two things that we need. Okay, so next up we're going to go into our app data folder, which is where Minecraft is stored. So the simple way to find that is to go into all programs and simply put a percentage mark, app data, percentage mark, and click that. Now that is app data and it's gone straight into roaming where your Minecraft should be at the top unless you've got something else of course called that. But Minecraft will be stored here. Okay, before we carry on, I'd always suggest doing this with a new downloaded version of Minecraft. Do it with a completely blank jar and then you can add your mods in afterwards to make sure they work. But you don't want it corrupting your current games and things like that. So basically just copy this somewhere on your desktop just so you've got it just in case. Then if you head into the Minecraft folder and just delete the bin folder, make sure you've backed this up before. This will mean that when we just close this and we open Minecraft, just plug in there, it will re-download the current version which is 1.5.2. 1.6 is out next week, so you will have to wait for them to be updated, all the mods, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so make sure you close Minecraft before you do this next step. Once again, we're just going to type percentage app data percentage. Hit enter. Straight back into Minecraft. Back into bin. Now, you're going to need a, some form of unzipper. You can use WinZip or 7zip. I'd personally recommend 7zip. It's completely free. It's the most awesome unzipping tool I've ever used. <laughs> so basically, once you've downloaded that, or if you've got a different version, you want to open archive. Now we'll just push this over to this side. Okay, then we're gonna go into our downloads folder or wherever you downloaded the files and bring them onto your desktop just so it's easier to work with. Okay, so I've brought them onto my desktop. I'll put them in the, the dark bit of this wolf's head just so you can see, because it's a bit hard to see when they're up there. Now, we're gonna unzip both of these. Obviously on yours, it might say unzip. For mine, it says extract. Windows does come with an inbuilt unzipper, so you should be all right. Right, we don't need these now, so just move them, I've just deleted them, it doesn't matter. Okay, now first of all, we're going to put multi-shot on first. So open up the multi-shot. Now these are all the files you want to copy straight over. So, just click in it, Control A, and just drag them straight over to the right-hand screen, which is this is your jar opened up. Then make sure to delete the meta inf file here. So delete that. Then just close that window and open the Optifine one and do exactly the same again. This has obviously got a ton more things. Copy that over there. Yeah. So there's nothing else you need to do now. We are completely done already. So I'm just going to move these back off my desktop. Okay, so now we're just going to reopen Minecraft again. Log in. Okay, so now the mods will be installed. You won't see anything yet. 
we go into single player and just create a new world for this instance. We'll just call this multi shot. I'm just going to put it on um, creative just so it's a bit easier. Okay, to check that Optifine and Multishot have actually worked, if you go into Options and Video Settings, if this is now a bar instead of buttons, you know it's worked straight away. What this allows to do is go further than the default far, so you can see much further. If I just go up a bit, a lot of this will start rendering back up to the horizon. We don't really need it for the minute though. Okay, to also check that the Multishot is working, if you press L, it should come up with all of these multi-shot options. Now this is where it gets a bit more complicated. Okay, I'll go through each of these just so you can see exactly what each one does and what I have it set to. Now, basically, exposure is the, the time intervals, as it says, the time intervals between multi-shots. That is, every time it takes an image, so if you set it to 0.5 of a second, it's image, 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 image. Obviously, the more images you have, the smoother the time lapse will be in general, but the final image amount will be humongous. I had like 100,000 images on 0.5, so if you take it any lower than that, you're just going to start getting to ridiculous numbers. And obviously, the more images you have, the harder it is to work with. Now, with the pitch rotation, your rotation, X, Z, Y, that all controls if you want your person moving during the recording. These are often, I haven't actually looked into much of these because I kind of do mine still. If you notice on my videos, I'm always standing still. I'm going to start looking into these though. I'd also suggest if any of these are on anything higher than off or zero, to just make sure they're on off, at least for your first try. Otherwise your camera will start moving when you start recording. Okay, next up we have the recording time. What this mod has is an inbuilt video recorder. However, I would really suggest not using it. It's a bit buggy and when the final product comes out, it does look a lot better and the files are a lot smaller if you use the method I'm going to show you. Basically, these are your hotkeys for all the buttons. You're only really going to be wanting to know M. That's all you really need. So you can probably leave these as they are. The save location is exactly where you want the save files to be stored. With this, you can edit it as you wish. Mine's currently set to pictures, my pictures, multi shots. But if you edit this, you'll be able to browse into that and check if there's any folders. I'll actually show you that just so you can see. So say we want to go to C slash users slash David slash desktop. Obviously all the images are going to start capturing all over my desktop. Probably not the best method, but it's just to show you that it, what it's actually doing. Now, default settings will revert everything back to normal. Don't need to click that if you just follow what's on the screen right now. Lock screen is when you press the button, do you want the screen to lock? This makes it so your player won't move during the actual recording. Therefore, it'll be a lot smoother and you really want that on. So don't change that. <laughs> Resolution, we'll get to that in a second. Right. This is a button straight to your timeless folder. Obviously, it's going straight to my desktop, which is where we've just set it to. Now, resolution is the size of the screen. This is also affects the resolution that you will see on YouTube. So, if you have it on normal, this is not 720 at all. This is 720, so you will need it this big, and you need to set it inside here. Don't drag the screen like this, because that won't work. You need to let it set itself to 720. You can set it to 1080. I personally don't do this, because I run multiple uh, clients next to each other. It's up to, completely up to you. You can record it in 1080 if you wish but I'll choose 720 for this. Now comes the fun part. So what we need to do next is actually get up another client. Now, if you have two accounts, this can be a lot easier. Or if you have two computers and two accounts, this is even easier still, because then you simply host this as a LAN and the other computer can join. However, if you only have one account like me, I could buy another one, but Minecraft's like £17 and I'd rather just not pay that again. 
So if you have one account, I'm going to show you a quick tip just so you can do time lapses. So you're basically going to log out and quit Minecraft. Okay, so now you've quit Minecraft, you need to start it up twice. That's two different versions of it. So this is the first one we'll put on the left hand side. We'll then click it again just to create one on the right hand side. Now, with the left hand screen, you need to log in normally. Just normal click login. It'll default back to 720p as that is how it was. We'll just put that over there for a minute. Now in the other screen, you need to delete the username and simply replace it with anything you want. I'll put my YouTube username for this. There isn't an account called this, but if you just click login, it'll allow you to play offline. Okay. Now, you have to then organize which account you want to be recording. Now in my videos, I always have my offline account recording and my main account playing just so you can see my skin. So if you want to do that, load up your single player world on the right hand window, which will be the offline version. As you can see, I don't have a skin because I'm offline. You then want to open that to LAN. I turn creative and cheats on. Then you want to go to your other window and join that server, which is now here. This will join it on your logged in account. As you can see, it's come up with my, with my proper name and I should be, there we go. So now we've got two accounts on the same computer. Pretty clever. What you need to do next is keep this one at 720p simply because this is the recording. This one, however, if you go back into L and change this to normal, it's just easier if you only got one screen. Once again, if you've got two screens, you can have them any size you want. Just make sure to keep the recording one at least 720p. I'd then put the recording one in the top left of my screen like that and my building one in the bottom right. So, whatever this guy sees is basically what is going to be on each image it captures. So, line it up as you wish. I usually line it up with the sun. I'm just gonna set the time to zero, just so we can get the sun centered. So something like this. Press F1 so you can't see the screen. You then want to press M, which is the multi-shot key. Now, if it's worked, your cursor should appear and you won't be able to move around. If you click into the window, you will start moving again, so don't press that. Just leave it as it is, doing whatever it wants. Click into your other window. And now, he will start, this client will start recording anything it sees in this screen. So if we were to just go over here, uh, I don't know, let's just get this. Now the beauty of this is we can see whatever's on the left hand side so we know if it's working. And obviously it's real time, so, you know, anything, Just this is just an example. This is also good because you can check it. So if it freezes or anything, you can see immediately if it's not recording what you're doing right this second. Therefore, you can then stop it and uh, restart it or fix it in some way. That'll do. Now, I'll just run off the screen. If we press escape on this one, click back into this one and click M again, the cursor should disappear and you can once again move. Press F1. And as you can see, these are all the images that were just recorded. It's recorded 142 images, and that's it. Basically, that's the main step of it done. Go to the folder that you save the files to. In this case, it's saved them on my desktop in this nice folder here. Open this up, and here are all the images. Now, it saves each one as a 1280 by 720 image. If I just go through them like this, you should be able to see me come on the screen, dance about and stuff, and each one of these is separate images, but they're capturing at 0.5 seconds, which I think is personally the best time 
it does create a lot of images but it's nice and smooth and you can see every block placement usually so you can see already it's starting to look like a time lapse and all I'm doing is skipping through images so now you know where these images are you need to open up your video editing program in this instance for me it's Sony Vegas so I'll show you it in Vegas if you have a different program you want to be looking for something called image sequence but I'll show you that in a second okay we're now in Vegas and I'll show you exactly how I edit those images into the time lapse if you go into file import media once again if you're on After Effects or Adobe Premiere it may look different but there still will be an option for this you may just need to Google it go to wherever you save the files for me it's desktop in this folder click the first one and you should see something here called stills open sequence now in other programs this will be called image sequence I believe I think that's what it's called in Adobe programs but once again Google that if you can't find it it doesn't matter you can simply add all the images in and place them next to each other but if you do it this method using image sequence or open sequence it's much easier so you just click this little box and that will select every image visible in this folder click open now you get a properties window that pops up for this you don't actually need to change anything just leave it all as it is there's no real reason to change it you can set a name for it if you wish that specific area of time lapse but it's not required leave all this as it is press ok and that will turn it into a single file now if we press play as you can see it's converted all of those into time lapse form already now that image sequence is a very useful thing but as I was saying if you don't have access to that if you once again into go import media simply highlight all of the files open and they'll appear in separate in your media section of your editing program okay so you then want to head into options preferences editing and this is where you can control the image length once again in other programs just google it to find out where to control image length you want to probably set this about 0 0.05 of a second click pro okay now when you then drag these in highlighting them all and dragging them in it will be a lot shorter file because now it's only 4.14 seconds long and that's basically it the rest of the process is completely up to you if this has helped you leave a like below and feel free to comment if you're stuck on anything or if you want to ask me anything about that whole process and i'll see you guys in the next episode